are the best built human beings who ever walked the face of the earth. What it uh, takes most of is determination and perseverance. It's you that's being judged, your very being, your very shell that you're standing. $100,000 is a lot of money, and all six of those guys want $100,000. Waist down, let's go, line up, fellas. Class athletic competition. The human physique comes in many different shapes and sizes, but never so magnificently as in the sport, and many will argue it being the original extreme sport of professional bodybuilding. These are the best built human beings who ever walked the face of the earth. There have never been people who have uh, physical contours and physical structure uh, like these people have. <laughs> People who have spent most of their lives sculpting and perfecting their bodies to the extreme, ranging from the live, lean, athletic bodies of competitors in the women's fitness category, Face front. to the hypermuscular women bodybuilders. Side chest. You know, the greatest bodies you'll ever see you know, anywhere in the world. And finally, to the super muscular, rock hard, Herculean physiques of the men. It's a self-devotion. You, know, you devote your whole time. This is years of preparation. Right? Every, every, every athlete you see here has been at least competing over 10 years. Every year, the greatest bodies on the planet converge on the Midwestern town of Columbus, Ohio, along with 40,000 fans. They're here to find out who will be the greatest at one of the world's most prestigious competitions, the Arnold Schwarzenegger Classic. We select and invite, this is an invitational, the top 15 bodybuilders in the world to come to our competition. But at this competition, the, the Arnold Schwarzenegger Classic, you're the top of the line. And here, you're just happy to be here. Just like in tennis, we have the Wimbledon and the U.S. Open. There are two major competitions at this time, the Arnold Classic in the first part of the year and the Mr. Olympia later in the year. Once a year, the greatest bodies gather here in a show of all-out support for the sport that has given them an arena in which to excel in a spectacular fashion. fitness competitor Kelly Ryan and bodybuilder Gail Moore who've never won here before and three-time winner Flex Wheeler who has a score to settle with fellow competitor and good friend Chris Cormier Flex is going for a record fourth win I'm just a predator I've always been since a kid I, I love to lose I love competition in any way you want to give it to me of intense top-class competition where there can only be one winner in each of the three categories women's fitness I've got a new routine planned um, things I'm working on with my physique and I train year-round so it's my goal to improve every year and show the judges that I am working hard women's bodybuilding I like to go out there and show people that um, you can have muscles and look good, and I think I do that very well. And men's bodybuilding. From a lot of people's standpoint, it's, it's my show to, uh, to win or lose because of my genetic ability. Come contest time for the athletes competing at world-class level. Focus and concentration are of the utmost importance. Mentally, you're getting into the groove. 
Not six weeks out. You're so focused, even if you find your house burning down, you say, listen, I have a contest. This is it. If you had to train like these athletes train to work, you would probably not do it. You'd probably quit it because they do brutalize themselves physically. Back in here. Elbows back. Three, four, come on. Five, bring it up. Six, seven, come on. Eight, come on. Nine, last one. Now over. <laughs> Gail Moore. At the Arnold Classic the day before the competition, the athletes are briefed on the contest rules, code of conduct, drug testing, and music requirements for the posing routines. If indeed your tape and the backup tape both should go awry, I encourage you not to stop your routine and go off in a huff. For these athletes, it's what they've worked towards for months leading up to the contest, the opportunity to compete and win. And come Saturday night, a champion in each of the contest's three categories will be crowned. From double bicep. First, one step closer to their ultimate goal, to be judged the greatest body. Porter turns to the right. These women have come a long way from the first bodybuilding contest in 1980 where 20 competitors took to the stage in front of a full house of 1,000 fans. Rachel McLeish won a mere $5,000, the title of Ms. Olympia, and in the process, revolutionized an entire sport. Probably the best thing for the sport, because Rachel being very attractive, next thing you know, Joe Weider's putting her on the covers of the magazine, and you have girls wanting to go to the gym now to become Rachel McLeish. And women's bodybuilding just took off. Five years later, promoters went looking for a different, more muscular type of female body. They found Australian bodybuilder Bev Francis, the most muscular woman on the planet, and invited her to guest pose at the 1985 Mr. Olympia contest. The crowd went wild. In the next two decades, women's bodybuilding evolved and became more sophisticated. Today, they compete in two different categories. The fitness category, where the emphasis is on athletic ability and muscle tone. So it took the focus off the muscularity and the influence of getting bigger, harder, more muscular, and kind of take away the influence of, of becoming more masculine like the guys. Ready to go. The other category is bodybuilding. These women go to the extreme of what human muscles can do. Women with smaller frames, under 135 pounds, compete in the lightweight division. All other women compete in the heavyweight. Porter turn to the right. Considering that the women's bodybuilding movement is just two decades old, a good measure of its growth and success is that today there are 33 competitors in the two categories vying for a total of $41,000 in prize money. Competitor number two from Los Angeles, California, Kelly Ryan. 27 year old Kelly Ryan is a top flight competitor in the women's fitness competition. I tried to prepare myself um, in terms of being the front runner. A lot of the magazines had predicted me to be the, the winner, and that's a lot of pressure, but I tend to perform better under pressure. Quarter turn to the right. But even that pressure pales in comparison with trying to deal with an eating disorder as a freshman at high school. At just 15 years old, Kelly would make herself vomit after every meal. And it got so bad that I was doing it up to five times a day. Eventually, she got the help she needed and overcame her bout with bulimia. For Kelly Ryan, exercising the demons of struggles past is what gives her the strength and motivation to have the greatest body in the world today. Competitor number four, Gail Moore. At the other end of the women athlete spectrum is English-born lightweight bodybuilder Gail Moore. The 30-year-old mother of one was drawn to the sport by its more extreme muscular aspect. She's been bodybuilding for the past 10 years. 
I don't know, just something beautiful about it. So it's real artistic and I don't say sexy, sensual. I don't know, it's just something that I found very attractive about a well toned, defined body. So I, don't know, I just thought it was something that I could be good at. In each event, athletes prepare themselves for their event quite differently. Gail has such a fierce passion for the sport. She continues to train and compete despite other responsibilities. I work out of business and I have a, a daughter. So my day starts at four in the morning and it ends at like 11 o'clock at night for like the last month. So um, my boyfriend will say to me, I don't know how you do it. I don't know how I do it, but it's just something that makes you do it. About 12 weeks out, I mean, still doing the hours weight training. We start to add some cardiovascular work and like the last month I was doing about two and a half hours and then practicing the mandatory poses, you know, we pose every day just to make you um, harder and bring the definition. <laughs> Fitness competitor Kelly Ryan's daily schedule is just as demanding, focusing much of her time working out her routine. The closer I get to a competition, it becomes an hour in the morning, then two hours of practice of my routine, an hour and a half training of, of on the weights, and another hour of cardio at night. Competitions like this are highly structured events with strict criteria for judging. To the untrained eye, everybody looks great. But to be the greatest body, judges look for the smallest and most subtle of differences. In the fitness category. The judges look for what's called an X type of symmetry, that the shoulders tie into a small waist, tie into the outside sweeps of the legs. So when you're a gymnast like this, it doesn't work like this. So it's taken me, you know, several years to develop my body to work on certain muscle groups that will help create that illusion of having that symmetry that the judges will find appealing. Kelly and the other 16 contestants take the stage for the first of two rounds that consists of a 45-4. All the athletes make their way to the stage for men's pre-judging. What it uh, takes most of us uh, is determination and perseverance, um, the ability not to give up, the ability to have options, obstacles in your way and, um, and be able to proceed through them. So this is probably 70% mental uh, and the physical part is something from uh, spins off of that. Just one week prior at the Ironman Pro Invitational, Flex had competed fiercely and lost to fellow athlete and good friend Chris Cormier. We were trying to concentrate getting ready for that show and things just wasn't happening according to plan. So we're trying to make up for time because I was behind time and we just couldn't meet the deadline. So as it got uh, closer to the show, we understood that, okay, this is the best that we're going to look right now. Um, unfortunately, a good friend of mine, Chris Cormier, was able to uh, defeat me by three points and, um, you know, that just crushed me. The greatest bodies of today, like Flex Wheeler and Chris Cormier, are only able to compete at the highest level and make a good living doing so because of the foundations laid down by the bodybuilding pioneers, the greatest bodies that went before them. Modern day champions like Lee Haney, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Dorian Yates, and Sergio Oliva all multiple winners of the Mr. Olympia title, the greatest bodybuilding title of modern times. So ladies and gentlemen, I want you to welcome my very dear friend, Joe Wheeler, to come on the stage. The Mr. Olympia title was established in 1965 by bodybuilding publishing tycoon, Joe Wheeler, to give athletes another contest in which they could compete and win cash. A lot of these bodybuilders won their title Maybe when they were 19, 20, 21, or 22. And at that age, you haven't reached your full potential of growth. This is attributed to the number of years it takes to obtain what is called in the professional field a mature physique. Once an amateur bodybuilder obtains pro status by winning a national contest, 
they continue to train, continue to hone, continue to refine and build themselves. And it's that years of refinement and building that cause the mature bodybuilding physique to emerge. You hardly ever in this sport see a amateur coming into the professional ranks who does well in the first couple years. How this sport has changed in just 30 years. And much of that change is attributed to the arrival of a certain young Austrian by the name of Arnold Schwarzenegger. I remember seeing him for the first time and being astonished at how enormous he was. And simultaneously, he was self-evidently completely charismatic and stood out in a really remarkable way. He just had you know, that combination of size and shape and also charisma on stage that made him actually unbeatable in competitions. Schwarzenegger chalked up four more wins in 71, 72, 73, and 74. Then, as chronicled by the book and documentary Pumping Iron, he won the 1975 Mr. Olympia held in South Africa, giving him an unprecedented sixth consecutive title, a record at the time. Well, up until the Pumping Iron first book came out, and then the film, bodybuilding was basically, what they say, in the closet. Bodybuilding had been around for the whole century before Arnold Schwarzenegger and had not made it big. And we rigidly stuck to the idea that Arnold could be a star. Arnold not only became a star, but the sport of bodybuilding was thrust into the public consciousness, helping legitimize the sport. Arnold, of course, was the leading athlete in the sport, a leading image, out front image. But at the same time, uh, Joe Weider and the Weider Publishing Empire has supported the sport of bodybuilding and been the leader in the publishing field worldwide. The last three decades have seen the sport experience unprecedented growth. When we first started more like a shadow sport. It was like a freak show. It's not a freak show anymore, the fact that everybody in the mainstream got involved. As a result, many of these athletes are able to support themselves and their families while training full time. Who calls your favorite? My day starts at 4.30 in the morning when I wake up and do my cardio at home. And then at 6 o'clock, I have my first meal. Then I go to bed, and from there on, every three hours I eat. A professional since 1992, Flex Wheeler's training regimen and eating and sleeping habits focus on enabling him to do one thing and that is to excel at the highest level of competition. I leave about 10 o'clock uh, from my house and drive an hour to the gym. I train for about an hour, hour and a half, do another session of cardio there, um, drive back home with another hour, and um, uh, eat again, go to sleep, wake up, leave about 7 o'clock, drive back down another hour, train uh, for an hour and a half to two hours of cardio. <laughs> The reason for putting himself through a daily routine like that is very simple. Flex Wheeler wants to be the greatest bodybuilder that ever lived and be proud of it. When I retire, then I can say, I've won X many titles. You know, I can show this to my kids and my grandkids. But there is a downside, especially for a family man. If I come home from the gym and my son uh, wants to go out and play and I'm exhausted and I can only play with him for a while and he doesn't understand, okay, you know, why daddy won't play anymore, that kills me. You know, my wife, if she wants to go to the movies, you know, I can't go to the movies with her or anything like that because we have this three-hour window um, that we have to live by. Stuff like that, you know, having to get up uh, and doing cardio at 4 o'clock in the morning, you know, not being able to sleep in, you know, just things that people normally take for granted. I don't have a weekend. I work out six days a week four days straight, one day off, and then the next day, so I don't know what a weekend is. I don't know what a breakfast or a lunch or a dinner is. I eat every three hours, so I don't live under the norm. Flex Wheeler has been bodybuilding since he was in high school. At the age of 33, all of his sacrifice and preparation have brought him to his prime. He is one of 17 waiting backstage, including Chris. Waist down, let's go, line up, fellas. It's time for pre-judging at the Arnold Classic, 
and the athlete's mental preparation must be as faultless as their bodies. It's more a mental preparation than it is a physical now. You've done with all you can do, but the mind is so strong, it can ruin the physique. Mental. It's a tough job somebody's got to do, you know? To show the muscle they've worked so hard to achieve, athletes make sure their bodies glisten to catch the light just right. Bodybuilders put oil on the bodies to, to enhance the definition, but all they need is a light smattering. You put too much oil on it, you look watery and soft. Backstage, an essential part of final preparations is the pump up before going on. It's important in a physical sense, but more in a psychological sense. If they haven't got the, it right, say, two or three days out from the contest, no amount of pumping is going to get it right. It's just that final little, you know, touch to say, yeah, the muscles are working, they're here, and just to get the blood flowing a little bit. The greatest bodies on earth finally take the stage for prejudging, where most of the points are earned. Competitor number 15, Flavio Baccanini. At every bodybuilding contest, impressing the judges is every competitor's objective. So what exactly are the judges looking for? Overall, the judges are looking for balanced, hard, defined development. You don't want to see a guy who's got a massive arms and chest with spindly legs. That's not going to work. Then you take into account the degree of muscular development he's got and the hardness, which is brought about basically by depleting the fat levels to as low as is possible, so that you get the definition and the separation between each muscle group. The athletes go through a compulsory routine where they flex and squeeze their way through seven compulsory poses. The first pose is front double biceps. Then, front lat spread. Side chest. Then, they turn around and do rear double bicep. rear lat spread to show off their back muscles. Turn to the side again, do a side tricep. Then, the final shot is called abdominal and thighs, where they put the hands behind their heads and flex their thighs and abs. Any weaknesses that somebody's trying to hide is going to be exposed in one of those seven poses. So that is almost the contest. In the center, Jason Arts. On one side, J.G. Dawadu. The athletes are called out in groups of three for the comparison round. The stress level increases as the judges ask Flex and Chris to stand side by side. You're standing there in your underpants in front of 5,000 people. It's, it's you that's being judged, your very being, your very shell that you, 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 you're standing. It's not your performance as, you know, you're throwing darts or something or throwing a javelin. It's you. So if a guy hasn't got it together mentally, that can be very intimidating to him. Thank you very much. At the end of the pre-judging round, Flex Wheeler is in first place, 10 points ahead of his friend Chris Cormier, who's in second. The athletes have a short time to rest, as the finals won't be until the evening. Flex has to be at the top of his game to stay ahead of the pack and be named the greatest body. Just as the on-stage nature of the sport of bodybuilding and its greatest stars have grown over the past three decades, so has the business behind the scenes. And I might even surprise you guys with another new routine. At the Arnold Classic Weekend, for example, the convention center provides the opportunity for the fans of the sport to interact with their favorite athletes, purchase product, and autographed photos. Thank you so much. And for those willing to pay the price for a special VIP ticket, a moment, and only a moment, of fame 
with their hero, Arnold. At the same time, the women bodybuilders oil up, pump up, and once again take to the stage for a final attempt at impressing the judges. In fifth place, Gail Moore takes the stage for the third round of the contest, the freestyle posing routine to music. It's her last chance to make a good impression and make up some ground. Yeah, I mean, you try and hang in there as best you can. I mean, I just, I love to compete. problems every performer's nightmare gail's music stops prematurely months of preparation and sacrifice have come down to this a moment of silence devastated gail leaves the stage without finishing her routine in the lightweight division the field is reduced by one contestant amazingly it isn't gail Moore from Ghana, Ohio, Gail Moore. The final six now vie for the greatest body in the final and toughest round, the pose down. During the pose down, it's every woman for herself. Athletes try to outdo each other by performing their favorite poses right in front of the judges. And that usually means jostling around and stepping in front of each other to get the best position on stage. It's also the last opportunity to show some personality and get the crowd support. Gail and the other five finalists leave the stage and wait for the judges to tally up the points. Now, Kelly and the others take center stage for the final comparison pageant round of the fitness competition. We come out with our high heels, our one piece again with jewels or diamonds on it, right. with earrings, hair up or down, and it's more of a, a beauty type round. They judge you on your, your skin tone, your poise, your presentation, even your face, the way your makeup, your hair is done, and the way the suit fits you. At last, it is the moment the athletes have worked so hard toward. The results. Who will be judged to have the greatest body? In the Ms. International Bodybuilding categories, Gail Moore places fifth. The heavyweight and overall titles go to Vicki Gates from Dallas, Texas, who wins the sum of $14,000. And despite being a heavyweight, Vicki still believes that she isn't over the top with her physique. I feel like as long as I don't take it to the extreme, and like when I wear my clothes, you actually can't tell I have a lot of muscle. So I think as long as I can keep it to that level to where I, where I wear clothes and you can't tell, I think it's, I think I can actually get away with it unless I'm just unclothed like I am now. <laughs> and in the women's fitness category, the greatest body goes to... To the woman from Los Angeles, California, Kelly Ryan. Kelly is given her trophy and a check worth $20,000. It's almost like time stops and, and the crowd just gets silent and you can't hear a thing and all you're just saying is, yes, I did it. And it's mostly a feeling of satisfaction that all the months and all the weeks and all the hours and all the time of preparation that you put in, you reap the benefit and you've come to the final outcome and you've deserved the whole championship. It's a good feeling. The focus now shifts from the women's competition to the men's. Everyone, fans and athletes alike, impatiently wait for the men's finals to see who will be deemed to have the greatest body. It's men's finals night. The pre-judging is complete and coming into the finals, Flex Wheeler is in first place, just 10 points ahead of arch rival Chris Cormier. The time has finally come for the contestants to put on a show for the fans, and especially the judges.
This is the moment the finalists have trained and sacrificed so much for in the past few months. Being on stage, posing their way to the title of the greatest body on the planet. On stage, it's basically, it's dark. It's so lit up, the stage is so lit up that I can't even see out in the audience. And I'm really comfortable and I just kind of surround myself in the music and just like nothing else is out there. And I just, you know, I just feel really at home. It's exhausting. People don't understand. You know, a lot of people call it an art form, which it's which it is, but it's also a sport, especially because of the posing aspect. It takes a lot out of you. You have to really be in shape. Uh, you know, cardiovascular wise too, because you are squeezing the force of blood and muscle at such extreme uh, pressure, you know. So that's why you see a lot of guys getting woozy and having trouble. It's hard for some guys. In addition to an increased cardiovascular regimen in the weeks leading up to a contest, competitors will also undergo carb depletion. They cut out carbohydrates from their diet to pull the water out from between the muscle and skin. The resulting effect is better muscle definition, making the body look harder, fuller, and more vascular. When they reach the contest, they're in a pretty... Um depleted state in terms of having got rid of all the, the, the fatty deposits they can in the body. And the posing is something where they try and make it look easy with a big smile, but they're really crunching away. And, you know, when they're crunching 20-inch arms and 32-inch thighs for three or four minutes at a time, it really takes a lot out of them. And, and there's a lot of adrenaline there as well because it's, it's the climax of the contest. It's the last chance to impress the judges. I want to bring back on stage contestant number one, Fletch Wheeler. The judges narrow the field from 17 to just six, and still very little separates Flex and Chris. Muscle for muscle, the judges take a final look. I mean, that's a really exciting part of the show because that's where it gets really crazy and the crowd gets into it and everybody's really hustling. Because you got to understand, $100,000 is a lot of money. And all six of those guys want $100,000. So it's intense. It's very competitive. It's all about money. The most successful professionals in their peak years are running, you know, a quarter of a million a year and, and above. But just as in any sport at world-class level, the odds of making it as a member of the pro bodybuilding elite are minuscule. There's 20,000 athletes out there who compete during a calendar year. Out of that, only about five or six will get into the pro ranks the following year. And those five or six, maybe only one or two will make it to be a successful pro, maybe. As the money got bigger over the years, so did the competition. And as the level of competition grew, so did the size of the athletes and their muscles. At 5 feet 9 and a half inches and 237 pounds, Flex Wheeler is a much larger athlete than bodybuilders competing 30 years ago. You take Arnold, for example. Arnold's 6 foot 2 and weighed 230, 235 pounds in his prime when he was competing. Now we have men on stage at 5 foot 11, 6 foot, who are on stage competing at 280 pounds. It was a consequence of you put an athlete from the 60s on the stage with men and women today, where well, they would look like uh, amateurs. This has led critics of the sport to wonder how safe it is for the athletes to continue growing at such phenomenal rates. I'm a little concerned that um, there is so much attention given to massive muscles these days that someone is really going to run out of time on the stage, as it were, and collapse. The interesting thing about bodybuilding is that it's kind of a laboratory for sports experimentation. And um, it's always about 10 or 15 years ahead of football and swimming and other sports. The use of performance-enhancing drugs by professional athletes has always been a controversial issue with the sport of bodybuilding at the forefront. Bodybuilding and drugs is just like any other sport in drugs. We're just more open about it and we understand it more and we don't hide it and we don't put our head in the sand like other sports do. 
if you think all the home runs that are being hit are because pitching is poor, forget it. It doesn't matter if you were taking a ton of drugs, if you don't train right and eat right, you're still not going to look anything. If you don't have that natural, I guess the genetics, you can't improve on something just because you're taking a bunch of drugs. So why do professional athletes endure what amounts to nothing less than controlled torture to excel in their respective sport? There's probably millions of people who sit there in this position. I mean, even just the opportunity to be the best in the world, that goes down in history. You don't walk away from that. You know, you don't walk away from a person like that. Come on. Come on. Whether the motivation is money or just an overwhelming drive to be the best in the world, bodybuilders, helped by chemicals or otherwise, must also be well endowed physically. Genetics. Straight up. Genetics and uh, hard work. There's no question that there's a strong genetic compound in the sport of bodybuilding, as there is in most sports. Uh, some people just developed more readily and naturally in response to, to exercise. And the professional level, the top professionals, why obviously good genetics, good body type helps the athlete when they're competing at the world level. The pose down is the last chance where these genetically superior athletes can show off their magnificent bodies. My complete focus is to go in to change 11 people's minds, which are the judges that I am the best man standing here on stage and I deserve this more than anyone else. The pose down is over and the exhausted finalists get called out one by one in reverse order, starting with sixth place. Please take the fifth runner up. Trophy and cash to Gunter Schlurkamp. The last two men standing are Flex Wheeler and Chris Cormier, the man who had beaten him just a week earlier. Second place and $45,000 goes to... That goes to Chris Cormier. Which makes a very emotional Flex Wheeler, the Arnold Classic champion and the recipient of a check for $100,000 and the accolade of having the greatest body on the planet. I win, I cry. If I lose, I cry. But thank God I was crying for a good reason then. You know, this is... Couldn't describe, I couldn't describe, I couldn't even stop crying. And just while I was standing there, everything played back every single freaking time. I was on that damn treadmill in the morning and how much I hated it, you know. It, it multiplied by my wife not being able to be there because our daughter was uh, two weeks old and she had gotten a cold. And that's really dangerous, so that was really hard. And it's like, okay, you know, hard work do pay off sometimes. I want to thank you. Arnold for putting on such a great show and I want to thank you very much Joe Weider for starting bodybuilding and giving us a way of life and a living. Thank you. God bless all you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much Flex Wheeler. For the ecstatic Flex Wheeler it's another contest over and another paycheck secured. Then it's back to the gym to prepare for the next contest. Mr. Olympia. I think the most interesting question always from a human point of view is where do we go from here? And I think the answer is that there is no real limit physically. We've seen that. We would not have believed 20 years ago that you would reach the level of development for men and women that you see today. And uh, that we will say that when we're looking back from the year 2020, that the physiques of today were great, but we can see now that you can become much greater.